Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about something special, something for the Sub Mini. Now this is not the Sub Mini, this is a Sub Gen 2 right in front of us. Originally, Sonos only made this Sub here, right? The Sub Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, they look almost identical and it is this size and it's quite a heavy monster. Now you see that this is a side profile and this is a front profile, right? They were designed to be used vertically. Now you can have this acoustic slot, right? You can see this is a pass-through slot. You can have it face you or to the side, fire off to the side. But the idea is to have at least one side have free airflow so that the air can be pushed out to create the long waveforms that is required for bass notes. Now, the other orientation for the sub Gen 1 to Gen 3 is for it to be laid on its side. Now, if you look at what I have here, there are actually some rubber studs to prevent the surface from being scratched. Now, you can lie it down on the sides. Now, this is meant to allow the subgen 1, 2, 3 to be placed on um, flat surfaces or, you know, to be slid below a couch if your couch has enough clearance or below a TV console. Now, this gives the option of putting it even under coffee tables and hiding the sub away. Now, this is great if you want to keep things neat and out of view. But similarly, it also needs the acoustic slot to be free. So if your couch is too low and you don't have space for the air to move freely, this is not a good option. You will be simply blocking the sound coming out from the sub. Now, no other subwoofer that I've experienced so far allows for this flexibility of placement. Even the newer sub mini. Mm, let me bring it up. Even the newer Sub Mini, which was launched in 2022, could not offer the same flexibility because you can't just simply lay horizontally. Now, the Sub Mini is already smaller, but it is cylindrical, so it already allows for some degree of flexibility when it comes to one axis because you can turn it all around. But being cylindrical, no matter how much you turn it, it's still going to take the same amount of space left to right or front to back. Now, the thing is, the Sub stands only vertically, which means to say there's no horizontal placement option. Now, if you're trying to slide it under a cabinet and you can't get it because of the height restriction, then you're out of luck because you can't put the side mini on the side. Why? Well, mm -hmm. this is why. I'm gonna floor it! Watch out! Move! 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 So there are instances that even the sub mini is too high. If you look at the TV console that I have, there's space under the console, but there's not a whole lot of room below. I can place a sub -gen tree horizontally, but it is going to stick out. If you want to put a sub mini in here, I have no choice but to take up more floor space and move it out from under the cabinet. Now, I cannot just light horizontally unless, of course, I have this stand right here. Now, this stand is made especially, especially for the Sub Mini. I have designed it and I have fabricated it myself. Well, somebody did it for me, but I did the design. And it's only meant to work with the Sub Mini to allow it to lie horizontally. Now, it is made up from steel, so it is stamped out from 3mm sheet of pure steel. Now, it looks very unfinished at the moment. There's tape all over because it is a prototype. Why did I tape it? Because the edges are not filed down. The anodizing is not great yet. Um, at the moment, this is the only piece that is in the whole world. Now, I've scoured the internet for options to actually mount the Sub Mini horizontally because of my use case. I don't know if there are many people with that use case. And the tape is also meant to prevent the steel from scratching the Sub. Now, there are supposed to be rubber feet below. Uh, they're not in place yet. I have not gone down to that stage. 
I don't want it to rattle when it's placed on a flat surface. Now, this is actually very flat. It won't rattle and the sub itself, it has horizontally opposing drivers. So the cabinet itself has very low resonance, very low vibration. It is unlikely to shake it, but I just taped it up so that it won't even scratch the floor. Now with the stand, I'm then able to lie the sub mini on its side. Let's see. And this is how you do it. Ta -da, there you go. Here it is. Okay, this turns out a few more positioning options for the Sub Mini, which was not available in its stock form while standing vertically. Now that you can lie it down horizontally, it fits into a lot more spaces, right? Because instead of being this tall, it's now this tall. Even if originally it wouldn't have fit a Sub Mini standing up, you can now slot it under my TV cabinet. Now let's talk a little bit more about the design process. Now when I was designing this stand, I had a few designs that I drew up. I'm a really bad uh, designer. I have no background in industrial design. I don't know how to use any 3D software. Basically, I was hand sketching things out a little bit and had some help from 3D software experts to help me render some designs out. The first design that I thought about was actually to use a gas cylinder mount that is already available on the market. It is nothing more than trying to convert a round surface to a flat mountable surface by adding some blocks and securing them with a nylon strap. But if you look at the work of art that is the Sub Mini, I don't want to do that. It looks ugly that configuration it looks so beautiful and this strappy design is just going to rob the beauty out of the sub mini so i threw out that design now the next design was for two acrylic stand joined together by steel rods now this actually looks quite cool and would have looked like the sub was actually floating in mid-air but probably not enough bracing to keep it sturdy, the two sheets of aluminum. So ultimately, I decided that maybe you should add some bracing. But if you look at the black part of the bracing, if you add the bracing in, it is now going to look a little bit ugly. So it's not aesthetically pleasing. So subsequently, I threw that out of the window as well. Now the third try was for a molded block. Now, basically, some plastic, I don't know what yet because I didn't actually try that out, and um, having it formed via injection molding. Now, if you look at the design of this, which I sketched out, I was actually quite sure I wanted that because I built in, I designed an air vent in a smooth air vent um, into the whole molded unit to allow for the air coming out from the acoustic slot to flow through from the bottom, assuming I'm going to put the subwoofer this way, and have the airflow route to the front. Now, that could possibly free up the airflow a little bit and maybe even make the sub response better to lower frequency and smoothen out the bass response. But when I looked around for a manufacturer, for someone to make a prototype for it, I soon found out that injection molding requires a mold to be made. And that was going to cost me a couple of thousands of dollars. So unless I know I'm going to scale that into the thousands of pieces, that wasn't really going to work out for a prototype. Now the port will also require some tuning, right, through many stages of trial and error. And this method will just cost too much to prototype and produce over the long run. So. I went back to steel and that's the final and the last design that you're looking at here now let me just take a look at it let you take a closer look at that so here now i designed it to be a one piece solid steel stand there are no parts to screw no parts to break and this is heavy and sturdy like how speaker stands should be especially for subwoofers and it still allows for pretty flexible tuning as well as placement. So this is the final design and after some rendering, I'm showing it here, I decided to proceed and make a prototype out of it. Now, looking at this design, I'm actually pretty pleased with myself at this moment as it will allow for a pretty clean look. Now I say clean look, not because of all these painters tape all over, it is not looking um, great now, but this is the whole design process. And how it will help is that it will actually help 
elevate the sub right to a certain degree so now this acoustic slot is no longer just two inches off the floor it is now raised almost five six inches off the floor and if you are suffering from some boomy base this actually helps because it moves the longer waveforms away from the surface or the floor if you're putting it on the floor which will prematurely bounce the sound of the floor and breaking it up with the acoustic slot now much higher off the ground it actually helps with the bass response so i am actually pretty sure that the stand is going to help with the sound so like i said the stand will definitely change the sound of a speaker or the sub that you pair it with now if you're not convinced check out this video which i've made for a pair of cantos stand when it was paired with a pair of Sonos 5s. Now, this then will definitely change the performance of the Sub Mini. Now, as I mentioned, this slot is now further up from the ground and it will help smooth out the bass response and prevent the bass from booming. Now, not only that, if you found the bass to be a little bit shallow or anemic in the horizontal placement, you can also rotate it such that the slot is now facing up and down instead of forward and backwards. Now, if you're firing it forward and backwards, it will likely have a wall behind. So you can have the front slot fire out into the open. The wall will reinforce the uh, base. But if you have it placed this way, up and down, and if you have a cabinet, you will have two sides being bounded and you will actually find that the base will be enhanced a little bit, a little bit stronger, but depending on your setup, it may or may not boom. So if you're using it for video, you might want to be placing it such that the slots are facing up and down. So you will get a degree of reinforcement of base from the longer waveforms bouncing off the ground, which is just two inches off here, as well as the top if it is firing into a cabinet uh, the, the base of the cabinet. Now, note that with this design, you're also able to rotate the sub to any degree, right? It's not just up and down, front and back, right? It can be fully front and back or fully up and down and every single degree in between in an analog way. Now, that's why I had to tape it because if I keep doing this, it's going to scratch the sub. Now, surely, this stand will change the sound and performance of the Sub Mini from Sonos. Now, it is really a very capable sub and I'm actually quite hopeful that I can make it sound better with just this stand. Now, I'm going to spend the next two to three weeks testing this sound and trying it out in different rooms and configuration. Now, if you are keen, please subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell so that when I do test it out and run the frequency response of the setup, you will know I need to run the frequency response to see if the horizontal placement options, front and back, up and down, anything in between, for the sub mini is going to perform better if there are any changes or is lying it horizontal um, going to make a difference at all now i'm testing my own product but i promise you if it doesn't work as well i will let you know so let's not waste time on this project any further so the next video i'm going to be making is when i'm pairing the sub mini with a pair of you can't see the wall is probably out of view now it's a pair of ikea symphonics picture frames now those picture frames, there are a pair of them, left and right. The bass is actually quite good already, but bolstered with the Sub Mini is just gonna sound fantastic. So just wanna know um, vertical versus horizontal, is there a difference and how we place this for the best performance out of the Sub Mini. Okay, so like I said, this product is something that I'm just playing around with, I'm just testing out. Would you buy this? Do you need this, right? I can demand it, but would you need it? And if you need it, how much would you pay for it? I'm just going to show you the invoice of how much it cost me to just mill this piece of steel. And that is cost, cost, right? How would you also change the design? Now, this is a product that's in the making, in testing phase. It is something that the world has never seen before. I want it, don't know how many Sono Sub Mini users out there will need it. So let me know by sharing with me in the comment section down below and watch out for the next video where I will test how the sound is affected by the different placement. Now, I have signed an NDA with a manufacturer of speaker stands and accessories to make this product. It might be something that will be unleashed in the world of uh, Sonos 
just maybe very soon but I, I just want to do this testing and I hope that you can join me in the journey and to help shape this product maybe even name the product if you want to help me with that it is a product I, I have spent months developing and testing and designing and I hope that you at least find it interesting and intriguing now for those of you who want to learn more about the sub mini check out my full review as well as some other videos that i've made for the sub mini here and here now you'll know that i'm a big fan of this fantastic product from sonos and if the stand makes it better it might really be a solid option as opposed to the bigger and more expensive sub gen 3. now i'll see you in one of those videos